So in our component, we will have an input value, which would be question of type string. We would have also the votes, which would be of type number array. And then we also know if the user voted or not. So we can write another input, which is voted and will be type boolean. Now we replace these input variables in our template. So we can go back to HTML, change this to the question. This one we can show only when he voted. So we can put ng if in front and just write when he voted, then we'll display this HTML element. And for better styling, we can remove this text muted and show it more visually with classes called batch and batch success. So it will be much more visible. So if we change this to not voted and go check it out, then we can see it's much more better and visually appealing. So we change this back to voted. And for the votes, we actually have to calculate them. So we can put here a variable called number of votes. And this will be our internal one, which we will calculate based on all the votes, which we get as an input. So if we go back and create our variable here, which will be of type number, then in the constructor, we can calculate it just by looping through and counting all the votes. For this, we can use the reduce function. The reduce can be used only on array, which has a length. So we need to check whether the votes has a length. If it does, then what we are going to do, we are going to loop through it and calculate. So we can check the votes and call reduce. And in reduce, you will get access to first variable, which is called in this case previous, or we can call it better. We can call it accumulator and the current one. So that means in our return, we will add to accumulator always the current one. This means if we have votes such as 0, 1, 5, 7, then the accumulator will be 0 in the beginning, plus the current one would be 0, then the accumulator would be still 0, but the current one would be 1, so the accumulator will, would be 1, plus the current one would be 5, so it would be 6, and then 6 plus 7, so it, it will loop through them, accumulate them, and return the result. We save. And now in order to test this component, we need to set the inputs where we are using it. We are using it in the HTML. So I guess we should create some mock data over here. So let's create an object over here. We call it poll. And this object will need to have the question, which we can call, do you like dogs or cats? Then it will need to have the votes, which is our number array. In this case, we can write 0, 5, 7, 1 and then also whether he voted or not, let's say true. After we save it, we can go to app HTML and set the inputs to question would be poll.question, set voted to poll.voted and last one votes to poll.votes. So the app poll component is the component which we just created. We also created three input variables, question, voted and votes, and we are binding to them variables. So if we go back to our website, then we don't see anything. Let's check our console and we have error in poll component. And the reason is we are doing it in the constructor. But the problem is the input variables are not initialized until the ng on init is called. So we have to move this to ng on init. Let's go and do that. Let's copy paste this code and put it inside ng on init. Then our inputs will be already initialized. If we go and take a look, it's already breaking here because we have the votes. We can just continue and see that it works. The last thing which I forgot is the image. So we can just go to app component, also set image here currently to nothing, which will be the one which we set in poll component, which is this one. This one will copy to app component over here and inside the poll component, we'll create a new input, which we will call the poll image, which will be of type string because that will be just URL pointing to our image. And in the HTML, we bind to this source. We do it like by writing the source and here pointing to poll image. Now we need to bind to this new input variable, which we created over here. So we do that in the app component and we bind to poll image and we bind the poll dot image. So if we go back and refresh, 
then we can see our component is working properly, the inputs are working, and we are calculating also the votes here. We can also type votes colon and the number just right here, so it looks a bit better. So our component works, but currently it's only possible to display one single poll. Of course we'll have more polls, so we want our component to support it. So what we have to do, let's rename this variable to polls, and this will be actually array instead of single object. And let's create another poll over here. So we copy the object and paste it. Let's call this question best month for summer holidays. I already found some image, so I'll just paste it here. And let's here we have the votes of uh, first answer was just, just got one vote, second answer just got six votes, and third answer got four votes. And let's say I did not vote yet, so let's set it to false. And because we said that when you are creating a poll, you can only have three options, then we can just remove this last one. It doesn't matter now, we are just mocking the data, but just to be as precise as possible. Because now we have the array, we have to adjust the app component, the HTML file. So we will create here a loop, we'll call ng4, and we'll say let poll of polls. So we'll be going through the polls and then each poll will be displayed here appropriately. So we have to change nothing else here. If we go to our website, we can already see that we have the polls here. We can see the images, the questions, the votes and whether I voted or not. So now our list component is basically done. So to summarize, we have created a poll component with our template as a card. We mocked it with our random data. Then we have created the inputs, which we would expect we would like to get from the parent, which in our case is app component. And these inputs we then display in our HTML. And we also need to calculate and store some value in our local variable, which we then also display in the HTML. Then in the app component, the root component, we use this component. We created some random data. We loop through them. And then we also set the bindings for each single poll of these polls. So that's it for this component.